Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, uh, it is Sunday, uh, first day of my new weekend. This is my long weekend, and I've got a kind of a big project I wanna tackle this weekend. Um, I have basically most of the house unpacked. The master bedroom is done, the garage still needs a little bit of work just to kind of consolidate things, and I got some ideas in there that I wanna do. Um, the living room's done, the kitchen's done, uh, but right now, the guest bedroom is just packed with stuff and there's one category of stuff that's in the mass or in the guest bedroom that uh, I want to kind of tackle today um, I've kind of teased about this a little bit in the past but I have an absolutely massive guided by voices collection that includes probably something somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 or 150 concert posters that are framed and I used to have them hanging on the walls of the upstairs of my house you never saw that uh, even on the earlier vlogs because by the time I started with the early vlogs I had already torn all that stuff down uh, and packed that up and put that into the pods but probably quarter to a third of what's in that guest bedroom are all those posters and I know I wanted to kind of get those hung up again and I think we're going to try and do that over the next couple days uh, but that means that I need to do some painting because I don't want to hang the posters up and then have to pull them back down again to uh, to do the painting. So I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to go with a real neutral color. Uh, you saw last week that I uh, put the lights in the hall. Part of the reason why I wanted that so well lit in there is so that I can put those posters up there and have them displayed properly. So. Now that that's done, I think I'm going to paint that hallway just white, because uh, uh, the the uh, the what's going to be interesting in there is not going to be the color on the walls, but the the uh, posters on the walls. And so that's the task for today: is I'm going to paint the hallway in the in the uh, in the house, the one that goes from the living room back to the bedrooms. So let's get going on to that. I think we're going to, have to start with a trip to Home Depot. So basically I want to, uh, this is the hallway I'm talking about, and basically I want to just line this wall on this side and on this side here and also all the way back here and all the walls on in here. It's all going to be lined with my Guided by Voices posters. I'm probably also going to uh, to have them out here on this wall. Now this will probably come a little bit later because ultimately I want to get this desk here moved into that corner. And so, and then everywhere basically that isn't the desk uh, will be Guided by Voices posters and memorabilia. I also have a couple of guitars uh, that will probably be displayed out here at some point. And that's actually what this, uh, what this uh, sewing machine uh, table is, is about to, I have an amp. Uh, that actually belong to the guitar player and one of his guitars that I'm going to hang up here and the amp usually goes right on top of the sewing machine cabinet there so like I said we got a lot of room in here but I got a lot of posters to hang and this gray color just doesn't do it for me so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here and this weekend we are going to paint this entire hall and maybe this wall too. I don't know yet. We'll see. And basically I'm just going to paint the walls and the ceiling this ultra white like I have in the cat room here. And you can see these guys are definitely uh, settling in here and uh, enjoying their new place. Bite and Nibble both kind of take their turns uh, sleeping in this place. And Bite loves to sleep here because then he has a view out the window and he loves to watch the birds and stuff outside. But they've definitely... Uh, gotten gotten accustomed to this place and they seem to really like their room so i also have a couple of home depot gift cards so um i am going to use those to buy paint i've got most of the supplies i think i get the masking tape i think i've got enough of the paper i think i'm good with rollers and brushes and stuff like that but i just need the paint so uh this project today is going to be sponsored by my sister brenda brenda is going to pay for this thank you so much brenda Okay, so I'm back from Home Depot. Uh, next step, I think, is we gotta start prepping this room to be painted. And that means those lights gotta come down. I know I just put them up, but they gotta come down because we're gonna paint in that area. I gotta pull the light receptacles uh, and switches and faceplates off, the electrical receptacle, receptacle there, 
light switch here, this light, and the smoke detector all have to come down. Now, fortunately, uh, since uh, I'm only gonna be working on the outside, I'm gonna leave the doors where they are. Um, that'll make things a lot easier. And then, of course, I need to mask the floor just because I don't wanna get paint on this beautiful new floor here, so. And that little thing there is coming off too. Now, one of the things that I've uh, actually done here is this. You, you may remember a while back I installed a wireless doorbell because I couldn't even figure out where the doorbell was. Well, it turns out it's here in the hall and I never did figure out why it didn't work. So I just basically patched up the hole, but I gotta clean this up a little bit because it's a little rough around here and if I paint over it, it's gonna look horrible. So I've just got a little uh, 220 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna try and smooth this all off and get it to the point where when I paint over it, you can't even tell that it's there. All right, so just like I did with the, the cat room, I usually start off with the masking tape along the wall first because then, you know, you got to deal with the fact that the walls wobble. They're not exactly perfectly straight. So if you try and depend on the paper to do it, you're going to find that the paper uh, moves away from the wall at certain points. So what I've done, like I said, just went all the way around all the surfaces here. And now, as long as I'm within like two inches here, I'm going to be just fine in terms of making sure we have full coverage all along here. So next thing I'm going to do now is put the paper down. All right, so the next step is complete. I got the paper laid down. I have essentially covered up every inch of floor on this. We aren't gonna get any mistakes, any drips that end up on the floor. And uh, we're ready for the next step, which I think is taking everything off the walls. Now, I was also thinking about maybe hitting this wall here uh, during this process. And I'll probably do that maybe still this weekend for myself. But um, I, I if I get to the point where I do the hall and take this apart, I'm gonna to have to take those lights off the wall and that's gonna make it really, really dark in here. So I'd like to be, if possible, get this to the point where I could put the lights back up tonight. And if I make the job too big, you know, it's just gonna reduce the possibility of that happening. So I think I'm gonna do this in parts. So we're gonna do the hall first uh, and then we'll go from there. We'll decide what happens next. So yeah, we got to deal with this again. Uh, because they didn't take the face plates off when they painted and just figured they could freehand it right up to the edge of it, they didn't actually uh, succeed and actually hit the uh, face plates a few times. And as a result, now that I've taken them off here, I'm going to have to smooth all this off before I can, uh, can go on. Otherwise, that's going to look horrible under the paint. Can also, just on a side note too, I am not into that color. Not at all. I, I understand why they repainted because that is a horrible color. What a dreary color for this room. Can you imagine? I mean, it's dreary as it with the gray, but holy cow. So I intentionally waited to take these lights down just because uh, I need the light in here to do that. Uh, but this is the last thing now that needs to come down. And so I have brought in another source of light. It's going to light up things for a while. So lights are off. Let's take them down. All right, so I got everything covered up. All of the, uh, the paint screw-ups uh, from the previous paint job have been cleaned up, ready to go. Got the light out on, I've got the light fixtures down, everything kind of pushed up. Don't want to paint on my wires and all that stuff. All set to go in here. I think I'm gonna probably end up having to do two coats in this place, just like I did in the cat room, because you gotta do that really to get the get really good coverage. I know this says it's paint and primer in one, but you know, two coats is gonna be what it's gonna to take to, to make this look good. So I bought two gallons of paint. That should be enough to, to do two full coats and probably have some left over. And that's fine because the ultra white, that's a color I'm gonna be using over and over and over in this house. So I'll, I'll use it. So this is the, uh, the paint that I told you about. This is my ultra white and they call it ultra pure white by Bear. Um, it's got kind of a semi-gloss uh, finish to it, so it'll have a little bit of a glow to it. It'll reflect light a little bit better, and I think it'll help uh, the combination of the white and the semi-gloss of it will make this uh, these walls, you know, reflect the light a little bit better than this gray with kind of the matte finish. I've never been really a fan of that. I think that's just kind of cheap paint, and I think that's kind of what they did. It looks to me 
honestly, I think that they probably decided they had to sell this place real quick. I don't know what happened. I doubt that it was uh, financial. It might have been that, that the guy who, uh, who owned the place had got, got relocated or something like that. But it looks like they kind of made some really quick decisions at the end to update things and to repaint and uh, that's kind of why we ran into the way things are here. So we're going to make this look a lot better. So let's get going with the painting. Now when I paint, I kind of tend to go barefoot and I do this for a reason. It's really important, I think, especially when uh, I'm only painting part of the house and I've only masked part of the house. Occasionally, if you, if you wear shoes, you know, and you splatter some paint on the, on, the, on the tarp here, you might step on it and not realize that it's there and then you end up walking off the, the tarp area and you track it all over the house. Uh, if you go barefoot when you do this part of it, if you step on it, you're generally gonna feel it and you'll know you did it and you can clean it off right away and that just saves cleanup afterwards. Because if you don't make the mess in the first place, you don't have to clean it up, right? All right, so I got a new uh, roller pad on my uh, roller. I'm using uh, something with about a half inch nap. It's not a real thick nap, but it's enough that it'll deal with the texture on the wall. I've also got it on my nice little extendo pole, and I've got just a little junk brush to kind of clean up uh, drips as they happen. It's, once again, it's, uh, if, you, if you can clean it up immediately, it's a lot easier to clean up than uh, if you're uh, waiting for it to dry. Then you have to figure out how to, how to scrape off uh, whatever that, whatever's there. So uh, as I did with the cat room, we're gonna start with the ceiling first. All right, so I started off, I've gotten a good coating on the, uh, on the roller. And what I'm gonna do is basically, I'm just gonna kind of do long straight lines and just kind of overlap a little bit, go back and forth a few times. And I'm gonna literally go right up to the edge. Now I'm gonna probably end up painting the uh, the crown molding by hand. I'll do that with a brush and we'll do that afterwards. And I'm just kind of repeatedly doing long strokes and kind of slowly moving back and forth over, over uh, the area, kind of half overlapping each time I go. If you do this uh, throughout the whole process, you'll get a nice smooth coat the whole way and it'll look fantastic. I'm not going to go much further out than this because now I'm starting to get to the point where I'm to the edge of my, uh, of my uh, paper on the ground. I'm going to hit this area again with a couple, couple more passes because I can see from this angle that there wasn't really good coverage the first time. It doesn't really matter if you get it perfect the first time because I'm going to do this a second, get it, give this a second coat. This is just kind of hitting the rough spots and making sure we have a basic coat to start with. So now let's continue on with the rest of it and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so this took a little longer than I thought it would, but I have succeeded now in painting the ceiling one coat and I've done one coat on this wall. I haven't really touched this wall yet. Uh, one of the reasons I kind of decided to stop right now is the, the hall is a little bit on the narrow side. So when I'm painting on this wall, I tend to get pushed into the wall behind me. So both of the walls are wet. Then I'm going to end up getting paint all over there. I'm going to, you know, end up damaging my paint coat. Now, like I said, this is a the rough rolling stuff at this point. I'm still gonna go around here with a brush and clean up all the lines, but I basically made it all the way back to this corner. So this whole one side of the wall, uh, probably a little bit more than half of the job is done. We're gonna pick it up and run with it again tomorrow, but I am to a point where I, I think I can get the, uh, the lights back up because even though I've only done one coat on the ceiling, I did a second coat around the two fixtures. So if I give that a little bit time to dry, um, I'll be able to uh, put the lights up and get those working tonight. I also painted manually around where the light switches are so that I can put the plates back on or at least get the tape off of the outlet of the switches so that I can use them. I also did a, our first coat over the uh, hole that was where the uh, doorbell was. So anyway, uh, we'll pick this up again tomorrow and we'll do the second coat and we'll We'll uh, finish this up tomorrow and hopefully you know, we can start hanging some posters up in here. So I think that's all I have for tonight. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse.
Good night.